This 4.5 horsepower is two-cylinder two-cycle motor and it was made from 1980 to 1983. It has the newer lower unit for that small size motor and the twist throttle control used a cable type with a kill button on the throttle end. The first major difference between earlier 4 horsepower and 4.5 horsepower is that some motors used an integrated fuel tank under the upper cowling, basically using gravity feed. The second main difference in the 4.5 horsepower carburetor is that it has a built-in fuel shutoff valve on the outer inlet side of the carburetor, activated by rotating the choke knob. Flywheel and CDI compared to 4 horsepower points magneto ignition newest 4.5 horsepower have ZDI ignition which is maintenance free to the moment it breaks diagnostic is difficult to do and the parts are expensive spark plugs recommended for these motor are champion L77J4 carburetor and fuel pump the 4.5 horsepower motor uses an integral gravity fuel system, but it also uses a vacuum assisted fuel pump for external gas tank. Carburetor is with a fixed main jet and adjustable idle jet screw with a knob. The 4.5 horsepower shares the same recoil starter such as 4 horsepower motor. This starter uses a unique vertical pivoting gear that when the rope is pulled, the gear unit pivots up engaging the flywheel ring gear teeth which are on the underside not outside of the flywheel. Throttle linkage. This 4.5 horsepower motor uses a push-pull cable throttle linkage system, which is totally different compared to 4 horsepower. The impeller is also different. The 4.5 horsepower have smaller and different design impeller. A common problem is overheating caused from water intake screen tube. This screen could be blocked with leaves, this could partially block water and the motor will overheat. The lower unit is far more advanced compared to a 4 horsepower motor. It has forward neutral and reverse gears, which makes the boat easier to control. Pros Maintenance free CDI ignition Twist throttle Some motors use an integral fuel tank. It has forward neutral and reverse gears. Cons The motor is heavy. 51 pounds. Expensive to repair CDI. Overheating problems on low speed. Shared heavy parts with a way more powerful motors. The production of these series of 4 horsepower motors ran from 1969 to 2001, but there were many changes during this time. The motor started with magneto system, points and condensers. Then CDI ignition was introduced in 1977. The 1978s and newer had a different fixed main jet carburetor. The most noticeable part of this motor is that what you would normally think the left side lever would be a shifting lever, it is a throttle lever. The earlier 5 horsepower had this throttle lever on the left side too. This motor does not have a shiftable gearbox, so it is in gear all the time. Reverse is obtained by rotating the motor 180 degrees. This cuts down on weight and cost. It was designed as a fishing, trolling motor for small boats. It was made to use a remote fuel tank, which was rather new at that time for a motor of that size. Magneto ignition, points and condensers. If the ignition is magneto type, using points and condensers, the points were universal from the 1.5 horsepower up to 30 horsepower from 1952 to 1976. On these motors, all the points are set at 0 .020 inches. If the points are really pitted, that is a sign that the condenser is not performing to capacity. If this is the case, then it is recommended to replace them, along with the condenser. The one thing that does wear is the points rub bar if it has not been lubricated. Coils. This motor's coils are mounted on the timing plate under the flywheel. The coils, especially those in the 1960s motors have a reputation for cracking and allowing moisture in and then starting to break down, creating problems. If the coils have cracks that you can see, they maybe also have cracks below which could be allowing electricity to short out to the plate. Carburetor. The carburetor is the basic simple standard unit and possibly one of the last to use the adjustable main jet style. There is no carburetor cam roller, but simply the carb arm rubs on the timing plate cam.
Some of the latest models have fixed main jet carburetor with idle adjustment only. Throttle control. The throttle control lever is located on the left side of the motor. The stop, start and fast indicators are located on the lower cowling behind the lever. Recoil starter. This recoil starter used a unique vertical pivoting gear that when the rope was pulled, the gear unit pivoted up engaging the flywheel ring gear teeth which were on the underside, not outside of the flywheel. This version was later used on the 4.5 horsepower motors. Pros Great compact design. It makes it very easy to transport and store. It weighs only 34 pounds. Parts are still available. Very easy to maintain. Less expensive points in coil ignition. Cons. Permanently connected drive shaft. No reverse gear. The motor must be turned 180 degree for reverse. Throttle control is located on the side of the engine which make it difficult to control. This 3 horsepower is a 2 cylinder, 2 cycle motor and it was made from 1961 to 1967. The first major difference between earlier 4 horsepower and 3 horsepower is that 3 horsepower motor used an integrated fuel tank over the engine basically using gravity feed, flywheel and magneto ignition. Compared to 4 horsepower points magneto, 3 horsepower have the same points, condensers, coils and the same problems. The difference is in the flywheel. The recoil starter is located on top of it. Coils. This motor's coils are mounted on the timing plate under the flywheel. The coils, especially those in the 1960s motors have a reputation for cracking and allowing moisture in and then starting to break down, creating problems. If the coils have cracks that you can see, they maybe also have cracks below which could be allowing electricity to short out to the plate. Carburetor. The carburetor is the basic simple standard unit with adjustable idle and main jet. Throttle control. The throttle control lever is located under the gas tank. Slides from left to the right with three positions start, slow and fast. Both motors have the same impeller and lower unit with permanent connected drive shaft. Pros. Great compact design. It makes it very easy to transport and store. It weighs only 33 pounds. Parts are still available. Very easy to maintain. Less expensive points in coil ignition. Cons. Permanently connected drive shaft. No reverse gear. The motor must be turned 180 degree for reverse. The throttle control lever is located under the gas tank which make it difficult to control. First tip. At the end of the day when you are done fishing and you load and secure your boat on the trailer with the motor still deep enough in the water, start the motor, keep it on idle and disconnect the fuel line, let the motor burn all the fuel and when the motor increase the RPM, pull the choke. This is going to suck all the fuel out of the carburetor. Next time when you go fishing you'll have clean carburetor without varnish and clay buildups. One of the main reasons for motor failure to start or work properly is clogged carburetors caused by leftover fuel. This does not apply to fuel injection motors and pressure tank motors. I'll have more instructions for the pressure tanks motors in a separate video. Second tip. Make sure all the hoses are flexible when squeezed or bended. If you see any cracks or the hoses are firm, they need to be replaced and secured properly. Third tip. It is important to have marine fuel filter on your fuel line. This is going to prevent any particles to clog your carburetor. Fourth tip. Make sure your fuel tank is stored properly. All metal and plastic fuel tanks must be stored at a shady and dry place away from fire hazards. Fuel tank cap or vent must be loose, so the gas tank does not shrink or expend. This is very important for the plastic tanks. Add fuel stabilizer to keep the fuel fresh for next couple of months. If you believe you have an old fuel in a gas tank, do not try to start the motor, just dispose it appropriately and refill the gas tank with a fresh fuel. 
Use the recommended oil mixture for two-stroke engines. Check regularly your prime pump for cracks and if it's necessary replace it with a new one. Fifth tip. Once a year check the spark plugs, clean them up and adjust the gap. For motors with magneto points and condenser, the points must be cleaned every year. Do not forget to lubricate the, the points or up bar oil or sponge. It depends on the usage. If you don't use it very often, it can be done every two to three years. Six tip. The impeller must be replaced every year if you keep the motor in very hot and sunny climate, especially if the motor is outside on a direct sunlight. For any other weather conditions you can replace it every other year. The recoil starter must be pulled out at least once a month no matter of climate conditions. This will help the impeller fins not to lose their memory. If you are doing it by hand directly on the flywheel, please remember to go in clockwise direction. 7th tip. Check regularly lower unit oil level. If you find white oily emulsion, it's time to replace your seals. If the oil is clean, you can top it off or change it once every 5 years. 8th tip. Check regularly your propeller clutch. You can do it by switching to forward gear, hold the flywheel strong and apply pressure over the propeller. If it slips it's time to change the rubber propeller clutch. If the propeller is damaged or bitten, you'll feel a lot of vibrations on your hand when you use the motor. Do not try to restore it. I'll recommend to replace the propeller with a new one. If the propeller is good just replace the clutch. Ninth tip. The last but not least, if you are in the middle of the lake and fuel pump fails and you are stuck, there is a way out. Here is one of the symptoms. The motor starts, works 1 to 3 minutes and it dies. Here is what you have to do. Prime the motor, start the motor, switch to gear and go with mid-range speed. Once every 30 to 45 seconds. Make a few squeezes on the prime pump. This will manually deliver fuel to the carburetor. Do not rush, you'll make it offshore. All of these tips apply to any two or four stroke carburetor motors without pressure tanks. Tenth tip. This is my most important tip. Have fun on the lake and enjoy your time. I'm sure if you follow these basic tips your journey will be pleasant and you'll have problem free experience. All my knowledge is based on more than 33 years professional mechanical experience. If you want to see more interesting videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I wish good luck to all of you.